What if you could build your own AI chatbot, smarter than ChatGPT, powered by multiple knowledge sources, fully secure and 100% under your control, without the complexity? Hi, welcome to Techie Talks AI. I am Sri from Shogni. On this channel, we showcase hands-on demos and insights into AI automation and no-code tools. We have created several Make.com modules to simplify no-code automation for you. Subscribe and join us on this journey into the future of technology. In this video, we'll learn how to create a simple self-hosted AI chatbot using FastAPI, JavaScript and Docker. It is built to be powerful yet easy to set up and manage, even if you are not an expert. It supports multiple RAG, real-time streaming responses, agentic reasoning and memory integration, all without relying on external platforms. Session-based authentication keeps the access secure, course policies block the unwanted domains, rate limiting protects against abuse, a built-in watchdog system to ensure that it runs and alerts us automatically to ensure that we can take quick action. This isn't just a chatbot, it is a simple yet powerful foundation for A automation, your own SaaS and much more. Let's build it, no fluff, just results. We will break this demo into simple step-by-step -step sections to make it easy to follow. The full source code is linked in the description. In step one, we'll build a Hello World chatbot. We will begin by building a minimal Hello World chatbot that simply echoes the user's input. This helps us to confirm that the static demo front-end website, the embedded JavaScript chatbot code, and the backend Python fast API endpoints are all properly set up and communicating with each other. Step two, adding agentic AI. We'll integrate a powerful agentic AI model into our chatbot. You can choose any model that you have access to. You need API access. We will use OpenAI for demonstration. With this step, your chatbot becomes truly intelligent, able to generate meaningful responses using large language models. This validates that your agentic framework is functional and that your API key is correctly configured and accessible. Step three, adding RAG retrieval augmented generation. Now we supercharge the chatbot with RAG capabilities enabling it to answer questions based on your own custom data, whether it is from a website, PDF, or CSV. This makes your chatbot highly relevant and personalized, perfect for your handling real-world customer queries on your website. Step four, securing the chatbot. Next, we'll focus on security best practices to protect your chatbot from misuse, ensure safe operation in production. We will cover how to implement core security to allow specific domains, add session-based authentication to track and control user access, apply rate limiting to prevent abuse or overuse. And finally, step five, preparing for production. Finally, we'll discuss critical elements needed to go live with confidence. First is setting up SSL for encrypted secure communication. So the endpoints, must be SSL secured. Next is creating an admin dashboard to manage chatbot sessions and view the conversations so that we know what happens. And then adding entity capture and form handling for lead generation. And finally, we'll see how we can implement a self-learning knowledge base for automatic updates and insights. Let's get started and bring your AI chatbot to life, fully self-hosted, secure, and truly powerful. Welcome to our first lesson. Today we are kicking things off first by setting up a basic environment for our chatbot. We will use Docker to create a simple web server that says Hello World. This is the foundational step for everything that follows. Let's dive in. So let's look at the file docker-compose.yaml file. So here is the docker-compose.yaml. We have one service defined here and we call the service front end. This tells Docker Compose to look inside the front-end directory to find the instructions for building our front-end container. It's looking for a file named Docker file. And we are mapping port 8080 of the host machine to the container's port 80. So when we open our web browser to localhost colon 8080, it will connect to Nginx web server running inside the Docker container. And we are mapping 
the front end folder to the document root of the web nginx web server that is slash user share nginx html so this is a live sync so any change that happens in the front end will be reflected in the container live there is no need to rebuild the container when we map the folder like this now let's look at the docker file in the front end folder so first line from nginx colon alpine this tells docker to use the official nginx alpine image as our starting point nginx is a high performance web server and alpine is a very small security focused linux distribution and this keeps our image lean and copy dot slash user share nginx html this line copies all the files from our local front end directory in this case just the html from the front end folder into the document root that is user share nginx html which is inside the container this is where nginx is looking for files to serve and expose 80 this is just for documentation it tells that the container listens to port 80 and this is what we are mapping to host machines port 8080 we also have another file index.html in the front end folder this is the actual web server of the application in this case it is a sample placeholder website this is an elementary website standard html file with with a title and a hello world message so how do we get this all running remember the code is uh, the url to the github repo is given in the description you need to clone it to get this folder let me come to the terminal in our this is the folder 01 env setup in this folder we run the command docker compose up we can also type up minus d to run the container in the background but since this is a demo i am running it in the front end okay so this starts the nginx web server mapping the front end folder to the document root okay it's running so now which port we should browse it is 8080 here we have the sample hello world web page and this is being served from this index.html see here hello world the, if we edit this page and save it we can refresh and see the changes immediately so this makes the development easy so this is the first step where we have so the command that we typed is docker compose up which will start the building of the image from the front end folder using the docker file and then start the container defined in our docker compose.yaml and once it is running we can open localhost colon 8080 to conclude this first exercise is we have defined a simple web service in the docker compose yaml created a docker file to build a custom nginx image and served a basic index.html file this setup is the first building block of our chatbot application in the next session we will build on this foundation see you there welcome back in our last session we set up a basic hello world page now what we're going to do is we're going to take a major leap forward and transform the simple hello world web page into a beautiful modern fully designed static website so remember this website is a, a demo website so that we can add our chatbot to this website so this static website is a fictional furniture company called sofa and company this will form a visual foundation for our chatbot let's get started so there is no change in the infrastructure first off let's be clear about what has in change so the docker compose.yaml and the docker file are identical to our previous exercise so the underlying setup is simple as an nginx web server we are not changing the infrastructure just the content it serves this is a great example of how you can separate your applications environment from its content so we have a new index.html so if you see this so this is the furniture company's website we also have the corresponding style.css which is added to this index.html page so i am in the folder where we have the docker compose.yaml for this exercise 
and I'm going to type docker compose up to serve the web server. So now if you come back to localhost 8080, which we saw in the previous section, if you refresh this page, you will see a nice looking placeholder website for the furniture company, sofa and company. See this? There is no chatbot. So where is this web page being served? It is served through this front end folder, the container that is running the Nginx web server. It is serving this index.html and this index.html has the style.css linked. That is why we see this. So with the same simple Docker setup, we have gone from a blank Hello World web page to a rich visually appealing website. We have introduced a structured HTML document and a comprehensive CSS file to create a modern looking website. This static site is the perfect front end for the chatbot we are about to build. In the next session, we will finally add the chatbot itself. See you then. Welcome back. Now that we have a beautiful website, it is time to make it interactive. In this lesson, we are going to introduce a backend service and connecting it to our front end to create our very first basic chatbot. It is going to be a simple echo chatbot. Whatever you type, it will say hello and repeat it back. This is a huge step because it lays the groundwork for all the intelligent features which we'll be adding later. Let's dive in. Let's look at the docker compose.yaml. So this docker compose.yaml has changed. It now has a backend section mapping to backend folder and it is using host port 8001. And inside uh, this container, our Python application will be running and listening to port 8000. We are also mounting two volumes which are being used by the container. The command starts our Python application using uvcon, a lightning fast web server. It tells uvcon to run the app object from the main.py. Now let's look at our backend. Backend has got the Docker file. This is a standard Python Docker file. It starts from Python 3.9 image, copies our requirements.txt, install the dependencies using pip, and then copies our application code. Requirements.txt has got fast API uvcon dot env module of Python and Pydantic library. We will see why we need these. In the app folder, we have the main application, which is the Python application. Here we are creating the fast API app and adding the course middleware. We will talk about this course later when we address security issues. Without this course middleware, our server will block access to a different port address. In this case, 8001. We define here a simple endpoint slash chat. So whenever we call this endpoint, this function will get activated and the message that we pass to this uh, slash chat endpoint will be fetched using body.get. So request.json is what is filling this body and then body.get message is the name of the message that we type and what we return is hello and then the message that we type. That is it. Uh, here we are using streaming response to respond back to the front end. And what are the changes in the front end? Let's look at the index.html. There we will have the chat container here and the chat icon and then chatbot.js is included. So that chatbot.js contains our chatbot's front end. Okay, so if you look at the chatbot.js, here we have the chatbot code. That is what is interacting with the user and passing the messages to the backend. So here in the index.html, we are also defining the backend URL, which is localhost colon 8001. That is where our Python application is serving the endpoint. So let's start the application like before docker compose up 
Okay, our application is ready. Let's browse it. Let's refresh it. If everything is okay, we'll see our chatbot icon. See, we have the chatbot. If you type your name, for example, it will say, hello, Sri. So this is a neat looking chatbot interface, but this is a basic chatbot. It has no backend functionality to talk to and large language model, etc. Those are the ones that we are going to add in subsequent videos. Instead of making the video very large, we'll stop this video here. And in the second video, we will convert this into a functional chatbot with an uh, agentic LLM added and also RAG added. And in the third video, we'll see the security best practices and implement the security essentials. So this is a massive step. We now have a full stack application with a front end that communicates with a Python backend. We have set up a simple API, handled cores, and built a dynamic chat interface. Even though it's just an echo bot now, we have built the complete pipeline that we will use for our intelligent agentic chatbot. Next time, we will replace the echo logic with a real AI model. See you there. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Your support really helps. Have ideas or suggestions? Drop them in the comments. Let's build together. At Shogani, we offer expert no-code make.com and Python AI automation consulting with ready-to-use modules to jumpstart your projects. Stay tuned and subscribe for more.